hi and welcome back to the second part of the wood seats murder so we got to is there sort of any reason in their childhood and what would have sort of made them into what they you know what they become effectively and murderers basically um so obviously nicola and um, we'll start that we'll start there first now i can reveal that i personally uh, knew Nicola on, on like a friendship level where she she even lived with me um, and I've known her that a long time and I can't stress enough that there isn't an expert on this planet that would have been able to have predicted that down the line this would have happened uh, that this vulnerable needy woman um, <laughs> would be in the situation that she's in uh, Nicola according um, to her um, had a very dysfunctional upbringing um, at the beginning, it was it was like you know, like most of us, um, you know, grew up in sort of like a two parent household and lived a happy home life. Only her parents split up, uh, and like most parents, when they well, you know when they did sort of part company, uh, the dad sort of moved out of the house, and um, you know the children always stayed with the mum. And Nicola was no different; uh, she stayed stayed with her um, her mum. Um, she grew up in a place called South Normanton. Uh, mum had a good a good uh, a good career. She had a good job. Uh, as an accountant, uh, they were comfy, regard the, you know, regards to money, um, and sort of everything began to slowly decline when uh, when sort of her dad went and her mum began to began sort of drinking, and she spent most of her time in in um, around the wrong men, basically, um, according to Nicola, her mum sort of yeah, sort of picked the wrong the wrong uh, the wrong men like some of us do, and. When um, I interviewed her first for my for my um, for my channel for the Fine High Living Low channel that I started, um, I asked her if she had um, you know any good memories from her childhood, and she basically said no. She she didn't have any happy memories, and that she spent most of her time with her brother um, outside in beer gardens while the mother sort of drunk excessively inside the pub till closing time, which then would be uh, carried on. Uh, to her mum's house. Uh, she claims that her mum would bring them back to her home and after a while they began to show like an unnatural in interest in Nicola and um, the abuse started occurring at night. Um, uh, this is all sort of like allegedly, um, you know, there's no, there's no sort of, I haven't got no proof, I'm not, I'm not stating that this happened, this is Nicola that, that, that said it has and the, these men, this man started sort of coming into her bed and Cuddling up to her and you know saying it's their little secret and that sort of thing, and it, it allegedly it carried on for a while, and this sort of was her life. She was sort of abused at night at home. Um, her mum was quite strict, but I mean that isn't a bad thing really. Um, but she didn't have sort of no rest respite in school because at school she was horrifically bullied. According to, to Nicola, so, so really she, you know, if the, if all this did really happen, then she's right. She didn't have sort of any happy memories. Um, she did confide in her mum and she did tell her that this sort of what was happening. And according to Nicola, nothing, nothing was done. Her mum sort of kind of dismissed it. So in Nicola's eyes, obviously, her mum didn't do anything about it, didn't you know, didn't sort of go to the police, didn't sort of make the man stop coming, didn't confront confront the guy. Um, and I know you guys are, probably will see that as as what I've just said, but obviously with me not looking at things in a normal way, I kind of think that maybe the same kind of happened to her mum. Uh, when her mum was growing up, I, I, I believe that her mum was probably abused herself. Um, I don't believe that... She, she, a parent just lets things happen like that to their child without sort of without something being behind it some some reason but you know we're all allowed to have our own opinion aren't we at the end of the day um, so fast forward a little bit she runs off um, to go and go to Sheffield uh, where her dad is, is now living um, and I don't know if he's married um, yet but he, he's sort of with a long-term partner, so effectively like a, like a stepmom, if she isn't a stepmom. Um, 
and when she was with like her mum, like I said, her mum was quite strict. So when she's run off to, to Sheffield to be with her dad, she's now got this, you know, newfound freedom, so to speak. You know, she can come in when she wants, come and go when she wants. She's going out all night drinking. Because effectively, in my opinion, her dad didn't really want her. Um, I think he only wanted her because it, her mum did, basically. It, it's kind of like a lot of, a lot of kids, unfortunately, are used as pawns in life, aren't they? Um, against two parents who were, who were part of the company. And um, so, she, she, you know, she goes on to sort of mix with these sort of wrong people, really, who, in my opinion, will have bullied people, even though, you know, she was bullied herself. So I think these, she's shown, she was seen as an easy target in, in every aspect of her life, totally. So I think these sort of girls who were drinking kind of like took her under the under the wing and she was one of them who they made do things, you know, and Nicola probably believed that they were her friends from how she spoke, uh, how she spoke about experiences with them. But really, they wouldn't have seen her as, for, as a friend, if you understand, like, what I mean. Uh, eventually, she tells her father um, what sort of was happening in the household with her mum, that she was sort of, you know, being, being allegedly sexually abused. Um, and... Again, her dad, uh, and, you know, the next parent basically doesn't do anything about it, you know, doesn't go into the police or doesn't sort of go knocking on the man's door or confronting the mother. Oh, no, no, no. What he does is he um, books a holiday. And, you know, he doesn't, you know, it's not a holiday to, you know, these beautiful beaches of the, on, on the coast of England or, you know, the all-inclusive sunny Spain or anywhere like that or... Even, you know, caravan holiday, camping, oh no. Uh, they go to uh, to France and they book, they're going for two weeks. Well, for fuck's sake. So, let me just, let me just stress this before I, I re reveal. So, your 16 year old daughter, who has been, th allegedly, uh, been abused. Um, you've now, you now know about it as a father. Uh, you book a holiday and you fucking take her, her brother, your stepmom, her stepmom and himself to France, to a fucking nudist camp. Yes, you've heard it right, a nudist camp. That's where they fucking took her, a nudist camp. Now, I did an interview with somebody um, for um, a podcast, and it's under my interview, so you... you oh, no, because we had to take it down. I'm getting ahead of myself there. And I told this story when it all came out about, about the murder, and we was absolutely bombarded with the family... Asking us to take it down and, and having a few threats and so on. Whether they're going to do the same this time round, I don't know. I don't care, but this podcast is not getting took down. So, yes, they take her there. Now, when you ask her about memories to do with um, home life of her father, you get the answer of the, um, he had a lot of friends round and they would play, play strip poker. Now, listen, I, I, swinging nudists, um, think. Not not my cup of tea, not my cup of tea, but there's nothing wrong with it. It's all legal, it's all above board, there's nothing to be ashamed of if, if that's how you feel and you want to liberate yourself. But I think you, well, it wasn't somewhere where you'd take kids. Uh, I, I, and I think even people, if, if anybody's listening to this who, who participate in, in that, sta uh, you know, that sort of hobby... And I've got kids. I would like to guess that you take your kids somewhere on holiday, uh, and then maybe the grandparents look after them, and, and you know you and your partner go and do what your adult things that you want to do. Mm. Um, wow. So I mean, let's be honest. She hasn't had a brilliant upbringing, has she? And, and, and even her barrister um, in court sort of said, you know, the dysfunctional, dysfunctional sort of background she come from, uh, that kind of made her more vulnerable and prone to to using drugs and, and alcohol to sort of cover up and mask up what she's sort of been through. And then that then leaves the doors open to people like like Zoe getting getting her involved in, in things that she wouldn't because I, I can honest I can honestly say and I will put my hand on my heart and and I know no one can say one hundred percent I know. Well I am saying it. 100% I know for a fact that that girl would never have done anything 
like what she's done if she'd have never, ever, ever, ever met this girl. I know that. If, if she'd have been rehoused somewhere else, or she'd have carried on living with me, or she'd have got a flat in my block, I can honestly say, hand on my heart, I know that Nicola Lethbridge would not have gone on to be in Newhall Prison right now, having committed murder and facing a life sentence. I, 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 I know that. I mean, I know people say you can't excuse behaviours, uh, you know, you can take a horse to water, you can't make a drink it. I get that. But I'm telling you now, no way. No way whatsoever. At, at all. No way. And you've got, to, you've got to sort of take into account that this girl, seriously, uh, you know, it, it kind of isn't normal. And then you've got Zoe. Zoe's sort of childhood is um, her dad and her mum beat her savagely. Um, her dad's older two children, they also had to go up beating her with, with belts and, you know, things like that. Uh, from the age of 12, she was introduced to weed um, and given marijuana by her mother. Um, and then that rapidly, due to sort of the, the environment she was in, uh, turned to heroin. So, I mean, you, you imagine you've got a heroin habit and it's down to your mother why you've got one. So, from the moment that Zoe was born, she wasn't loved, uncared for. She wasn't wanted. She was forced to go out and, and, and steal uh, shoplift to feed her mum's habit. The only respite that Zoe got was she when she went to live with her, uh, stay with her grandparents. Only her mum wouldn't let her go for long in case her mum lost the benefit for her. So I mean, you know, Zoe. In, I mean, although she's probably, the, in my opinion, the 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 dominant one who who sort of kind of is responsible for it. Um, it wouldn't have happened without her. You, she had a fucking bad life. You know, she, and, and she did, and uh, uh, neither of them, in my opinion, set out to go and murder this man. Unfortunately, it happened. I can't take that away, and they, people do need punishing. They can't just go about taking people's lives, whether they meant to or they didn't. I get that. But things sometimes, you, you've got to look at the whole bigger picture. It isn't a case of, you know, God, lock them away, they're murderers. And, you know, it's like someone pointed out on, on, on a comment... Um, that they wrote to one of my videos. I mean, is it? Um, well, oh God, what do you call it? Mick, Mick Philpot, or whatever, you know, in, 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 you know, set fire to to his kids. I mean, he got a minimum. He got life, but Hamlin had to do fifteen years, and he killed six children. You know, fucking, it's it's unreal. So, in the next episode, I'm going to go back to the court case and tell you what was said in court, the timeline in court, and then we'll get to to the sentencing. So. Thank you for all you people who have downloaded. Keep sharing me. Um, don't forget to join my channel, to subscribe to Flying High Living Low, so you can sort of see what sort of um, the advert, the quest for guests that I'm looking for. If you want to come on and speak, uh, somebody's fucking ringing me. Um, so, yeah. Love you all. Bye.